My name's Sarah Hardacre and I'm a fabric designer. I love drawing big floral designs. I drew the roses from, from the roses in my garden. I've got loads of David Austin roses. I absolutely love David Austin roses. Just pick them and just kept drawing them, kept drawing them, kept drawing them until it became a design. It was very early on in New Designers, I think it was maybe only the second year, it was 1994. I met this extraordinary fellow and he kept asking me questions, he was a really interesting man. At the end of the conversation he said, uh, come and see me on Monday, I'd like to offer you a job. And I said, and it fills me with horror now to think of this, I said, I'm really sorry but who are you? And he said, I'm Anthony Little, I own Osborne and Little. I said to him, Oh, I don't, I, I don't think I could do that job. I'm not a print designer and I'm, a, I'm an embroiderer. And he said, come and see me on Monday and we'll make you a print designer. And, and so I did and, and I stayed there for eight years. He taught me a lot and he could see that I had something even though it didn't necessarily fit with the Osborne Little Brands. I carved a little niche for myself probably within the company and did lots of the colouring. I used to go colouring with Nina Campbell sometimes which was fantastic because she was such an inspirational lady. Somebody who was really, really good at colour and good at putting colours together and I think I probably learned lots of her as well. I left Osborne a little to move to the Cotswolds. It was a very organic move. My husband is a teacher and he had applied for various jobs, one in Kent, one in Gloucestershire. It just happened that the Gloucestershire one was his first interview and he was offered the job there and then. So without knowing the area at all, we up sticks and moved. I was quite anxious really about moving to somewhere where I, I didn't know anybody. I've got no connection with this area, no family here, just you know, plonked into the middle of the countryside and you either absolutely embrace it and throw yourself into doing everything or you become a bit of a hermit and I was really up for joining in. You move to a beautiful part of the world, live in the countryside, every day is a joy and then if you have to be commuting to and from London or Leicester or wherever every day, there doesn't seem much point in having that lovely country life. So, so I made the decision to to start on my own. There's women who live in, in our village who have had spectacular careers in London and you know you might not know that because they're a mum and I'm a mum and we don't tend to talk about careers, we talk about baking or children's parties or whatever else. All of these really inspirational ladies who live locally, who all do things and are all really interesting and I find, I find living in a community quite inspiring. I always think in product. I don't, I don't necessarily think in terms of a flat drawing. Always at the back of my mind it will be something. It'll be a cushion or it'll be a piece of upholstery or it'll be a curtain. It won't just be a square drawing. If a design flows out really quickly and immediately, I know it's going to be a winner, I know it's going to be a really good seller and it's going to work. If I'm labouring over something, ditch it, it doesn't go through. You can't do everything. You think that you can when you start your own business and there's just you and you think you have to do it all and you have to keep control of it all. But do the things that you're really good at and the things that you're not good at or you don't like doing, pass on to somebody else and that will free you up to enjoy the things that you do.